Welcome to Two Women in Crypto, a weekly podcast birthed on a whim by two women who are excited about the cryptocurrency landscape and have a shared passion about empowering others to step into the digital, tokenized world of the future. We offer tips, tricks, and our own individual insights as to how to begin to navigate this shift. We are not financial advisors nor experts. We are just here to encourage you to look at the possibilities. So welcome to the future. You're right on time. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? I am very well. Very well. How about yourself? I'm pretty freaking hyper today, Cal. I thought you were going to tell me you're pretty freaking full from the breakfast you just ate, but I know you're very hyper, which is good. That's right. I just ate just eggs. It's just eggs. Just eggs. It's yeah. everything but an egg. <laughs> Please do tell. What What is just an egg? Whew. All right. So y'all, good morning. It's been, welcome back to Two Women in Crypto. We're just, we're going to talk about food for, for a minute because, you know, Kelly and I are big time foodies. I have a degree in nutrition. I, um, I ran around for a good, like two, three years of my life trying to convince people to be vegan back in the day, you know? I was vegan for a long, long time. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. So I was vegan for two years. I did it super healthily. I was like glowing. But the problem is, is like, I did all this research, right, Kelly? Like, just like I'm doing with crypto, I did with food. And the genetic engineering of our food has increased our levels of cancer, hypertension, high blood pressure, high, di high di diabetes. And it's like, we don't need to be an expert in the field of nutrition to look around to say, hey, how's American looking? Are we looking good? Are we right. looking healthy or do we look unhealthy? How do we feel? So right. when I see things like, it's like just eggs on LinkedIn, if the company is going to be going public, okay, it's food engineering. It mimics the texture and taste of real eggs. It's not an egg, you guys. It's it's protein isolate that they take from a mung bean with a whole bunch of chemicals. That's it. You're eating chemicals in a pan. And if right. you think if you think this is going to help you, and they will sell it, they will greenwash you. It's sustainable. Well, and they've got a, an amazing marketing campaign going on. I mean, the video, and we'll post the link, but just query it, just eggs. And it's got Jake Gyllenhaal, if that's how you pronounce his last name, <clears throat> not sure. But I mean, it's, you know, it's just like, wow, it just takes you right in. It's like the whole, and the website's amazing. It's, they've done an amazing job with their branding. But, yeah. you know, I'm a carnivore. I've been a carnivore now for six months and I haven't through all the times that I've gone through all the iterations of my own diets, I feel amazing where I'm at right now. But yeah, I'm eating real meat, not the fake meat. I'm eating the real meat. But yeah, it's crazy. It's really crazy to see how fine tuned their messaging is. Yeah. And I'm a proponent of like, everyone is an individual and what Absolutely. I eat and what you eat, you know, like nutrition's a journey. But at the end of the day, we need real food. We right. don't, if we continuously just eat chemicals, if chemicals become a big part of our future life, then it, we are not going to be vibrant, healthy beings. And that's all I want to say about it because it, yep. it kind of disgusts me, you know? It's that's a whole, that's a whole yeah. different rabbit hole for sure. Yeah. It is, but it is something to be aware of. So, but We'll get into the crypto side of things before we dive into all the news that I know you've been doing and diving into this week. And there's actually, there's some, I know it's been kind of quiet in a way, but not really at the same time. We do want to just do some housekeeping items and that's going to be about our classes because we have a great class. The first one is on Saturday, September 17th, which would be the introduction basically to crypto basics. And this is a great overview if you're not sure or even if you think you are sure 
Uh, it's a great overview on the importance of understanding what cryptocurrency is about, what the blockchain is kind of referring to. Um, so if you're on the fence of not sure whether or not you want to you know, stick your big toe in this pond, this would be a great opportunity for you to lean in. And then the next thing we have is on the 24th is our uh, monthly Q&A. And the cost for this one is $10. The cost for the prior class is $45. Um, but well, well, well worth both of it. But this one particular is a great way, especially if you're looking for community and you have questions, you can do a deep dive with us, with those that gather monthly and just kind of lean into a myriad of topics um, that we kind of tap into. So those are our housekeeping items to begin. So yeah, you ready to dive in? I sure am. I sure am. And just to kind of go back and touch base on the intro to crypto class, like real quick. Um, <clears throat> so a couple months ago, um, some of the folks that work for Algorand, IOHK, um, Wave Financial, like big time players in the industry and IOHK is Input Output Hong Kong. They're actually the organization that really does Cardano because no one owns Cardano. They're a decentralized company. And one of the uh, legal councilmen was on this panel for, um, it was called the Blockchain Business Council. And I've been hearing a lot of things like in the community, and I'm sure you have too, Kelly. People aren't really ready to take a look at cryptocurrency and blockchain and how it's going to disrupt our daily lives. No, okay? no, like, absolutely. You know, and, and again, like Kelly and I, like, you know, I get fired up, like, you know, it's like we can make jokes out of the just egg thing, but it's, it's automation, right? It's all automation. Okay. So it's the same thing. Like when I'm listening to these folks speak, this guy's name is, um, the first guy was Peter Grassano. He works for Algorand, spent most of his career at JP Morgan. And he basically said, he's like, listen, Without cryptography, if people, if companies don't switch over, if banks, institutions don't switch over, they're going out of business right? because you will go to zero and we see like the hacks, you know, with like Experion and, you know, like the, you know, iPhones and all of like, just so like email addresses, like I think Yahoo just had a big hack as well. So it's kind of like we, we're shifting over to a high tech, you know, industry. We have to have that security because if we don't move over to the blockchain, it's going to be completely insecure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just goes along. There's so many layers to that and what security looks like. I mean, you think right. about the companies that get held for ransom, their databases get taken. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things, not just on you know, on the personal level, of course, as well, which is deeply, deeply concerning, but on a global level in terms of just functionality, it's a very critical thing. Yeah, so. no, I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even like listening to some of these other folks too, because I think the one guy's name was Matteo Dante Pachuria well, from Waves Financial. They manage like a hundred billion dollars worth of assets. And he even said, he's like the deception the corruption. I mean, these are big time players calling mm -hmm. out the old legacy system. So yeah. as one system falls, I just encourage everybody, Kelly and I, we try to make this fun. We know we're take this is heavy and we're trying to take heavy topics. We're trying to have fun. We're creating awesome community and we're also providing education. What is cryptocurrency? What is digital assets? What's a digital wallet? Like, where can I buy crypto? So all of these like basic concepts and trying to make it fun. Um, so I'm highly suggesting like, please reach out to your family and friends because it's kind of like prepping, right? When it's over or when an event happens, there's no more time for prepping, right? So, right. you know, I just want to kind of like drive that point home because it's the same thing when I'm looking at banking institutions and just there's so much instability and uncertainty, you know, so that's why we always say like have some extra food, have some extra water, get cash in the house because we don't know what's going to happen. 
Right. Okay, but, but we do know that two and a half years ago, the government told us to stay home and they're changing our whole world. And now we're going to be eating genetically modified eggs. Yes. Right? So yes. This yes. Is part of a process that we want to, we want to, we want to rise yeah. above all of this. Yep. Got to lean in and it's hard for people to lean in. So it is, that's yep. what, you know, they lean in a moment and then it frightens them and then they lean right back out. But I know. That's why and it's here. Not. Yeah. And that's why we're, you know, we're here. We're definitely here. And we just, you know, again, there's more of us than there are of them. And like, you know, it's really, really interesting because like I'm finding out, you know, when I'm listening to some of the folks in the, in the cryptocurrency world, like, it's kind of like, I think because we follow the money. So we're kind of like, you know, I listen to, um, coin bureau like guy the mm-hmm. crypto guy he's like really really sweet he's he's like based in the uk and sure enough he's doing a whole video on the world economic forum and he was like all right folks for everybody out there like look up who's running for your local city council if they've graduated from like the young leadership executive programs okay anything that has to do with the world economic forum Vote for anyone but them. Anyone. That's interesting. Because the more, right, the more we research, the more we're like, this is not how we want the the ship to be steered. Okay. Because if the if the World Economic and Klaus Schwab has has our way, we must prepare for an angrier world. And I'm just putting that out there. I'm not making this up. This isn't a conspiracy theory. Klaus Schwab has a video. Go to youtube.com, type in Klaus Schwab, prepare for an angrier world. And he's there. We must prepare for an, I mean, the guy is a freaking crazy, crazy nut. And we don't want this. No, we don't. But you know what? As a segue, at least we have soccer. That's right. (laughs) We have soccer. So let's talk about FIFA. All right, you want to talk about FIFA? All right, so everybody, FIFA is the world, like the world soccer cup. Okay, um, so men and women, Algoran is the partner for FIFA. They launched, I believe, yesterday um, their platform with uh, NFTs, which is really, really cool. So I believe back in 2018, 3.2 billion people watched the World Cup for soccer. Three That's point a big number. Billion. So imagine everybody getting some sort of like NFT memento from the from the World Cup that that will be uh, Algorand. Isn't that? I think that's so cool. I mean, yeah. I just think that's amazing to lean into that. And maybe it's everybody's tickets. Who knows what it'll be? And Algorand too is the one that does. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. The drone racing, right? That's right. That's right. So they do drone racing. They partnered with um, a sailing company in Canada. They do like this big sailing race. So they partnered with them. The Gotham hmm. Football Club that's based in New York and New Jersey. I think, um, did I write that down? How many they, I, I can't really remember. A oh, hundred million dollar deal they did with the Gotham. Yeah. So I think. Algorand is really looking to promote their uh, blockchain and some of the things that they can do with sports, which is yeah, really cool. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of nice to see some cool things. I mean, not that none of, all of it's cool to me. I mean, all of it is, I shouldn't say all of it's cool. It's important to understand. But, you know, because sports is such a pivotal part of what kind of keeps us sane in the world, a lot of the population It's nice to see like during the regattas or whatever they're doing for sailing. So it's nice to see their name popping up personally. Yeah. And I think we're going to see more and more like I don't really want, you know, like we don't Kelly and I don't have TV, but, um, you know, I was at my parents and they were watching the New York Mets play and like behind home plate, there was an advertisement for Tezos. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, again, it's like the blockchain and, and, you know, cryptocurrency is coming It's here. It's actually not coming. It's here. We're just going to, you know, slowly get more and more exposure to it, you know. And again, I think this is really cool. And it was kind of cute because this morning I 
I said to Kelly, I said, I signed you up for true you. And she was like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so please continue because I'm, I'm out there. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> so Kelly is not out on true you, but you know, comment, make a comment if you want Kelly on true you. Um, oh, no. She is single. <laughs> So anyway, it's a dating, what this is. This is it's funny. A, it's a dating app that was launched on Algo Fund, which is really, really cool. So you can actually um, find your true love in the metaverse. There you go. So all you single folks, <laughs> go ahead and sign up for True You out in the metaverse. I mean, what are you gonna do? Get data an avatar? No, you actually, it's, it's like, it's like a alternative to Tinder. You can yeah. meet in person. It's just, you're, you know, you can, you can just meet in the metaverse first and then go meet at like your local coffee shop or something like that. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool because you can actually make sure, you know, see if someone's real. Like, <laughs> you like you're not going to get catfished if that's right. the term. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the term. My kids would probably be. If they were in the room right now, they'd be rolling their eyes thinking your mom's trying to be cool using terms. She has no idea what they mean. So, yeah, I think yeah. it is called catfish, though, like when they okay. stand you up or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, I think, you know, we're seeing like really cool applications being developed on top of Algorand's blockchain. Um, something I'm going to be doing a deeper dive into. But um like conflict resolution or like mediation. Mm -hmm. So for disputes is going to be also offered on the Algorand platform. It's so new that I couldn't find too much information about it, but that's going to be something else that I'm going to be um, doing a deeper dive on. And the other thing is too, I just want everyone to understand this. The person who created Algorand, his name is Silvio Macaulay. He is like the father of the blockchain. Every single person, including Charles Hodgkinson, says Silvio is the smartest person hmm. in blockchain and cryptocurrency. He spent most of his career at MIT. He is part of the Hamilton Project, okay, for the open central bank digital currency. It is possible that when they do release the CBDC in America, it will be built on Algorand. Speculation, I'm not saying it is. It could be Ethereum, it could be Solana, it could be something else, but you know, it could be Algorand, right? So Algorand, Algorand's platform um, for their blockchain was adopted in Ecuador, right? Not for CBDC, right. but again, you know, um, we're seeing more and more adoption for these platforms. You know, Algorand is definitely going to be a big player. Well, and as always, we always put the disclaimer in our in our little videos here that, first of all, we are just here for your entertainment purposes and encouraging you to lean in. Um, and full disclosure is that a lot of the projects that we do speak of, we do have holdings in ourselves personally. But it is, you know, we just bring these things to your attention to so that you can go and do your own research and do your own homework as far as understanding what a project's about. But that is pretty interesting. It'll be fun yeah. to see what, what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and again, like, you know, I know we kind of touched base last week with like the Fed app, like, you know, anything that's going to be domestic, that's all going to be like USDC. You know, like just no, there's no bridge currency needed, you know, if, if to do like, you know, just domestic payments, right? But once we do cross border payments, that's different. That's when I think we'll start to see XRP and those kind of cross border tokens be used for sure. Yeah. All right. Deep dives, deep breaths for all the changes coming. I know I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And, um, you know, I, I also was kind of doing some research on uh, Cardano. So we're, we are looking for September 22nd to go live um, with the Vasil hard fork. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is really, really important 
you know, because it's kind of interesting, right? Like everything is like the Ethereum merge, you know, we have the Ethereum merge, we have Cardano Vasil hard fork, it's all going to happen around the same time. And it's kind of like, okay, so once the Vasil hard fork is completed, scaling, optimization, better adoption, right, Kel? I mean, network the ability to connect layer twos. I was um, driving, um, spending quite a bit of time in my car recently and listening to, I think it was, I can't remember what channel, if I was listening to a Bloomberg station or what have you, but they were bringing in what was happening here for this release and what they were talking about the, the forking. So it'll be interesting to see how this is, how it rolls out. And then they were talking about, you know, a lot of other things. My point in bringing this up is that it's becoming more, um, more in the mainstream conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it, and it really matters a lot, you know, like, like, you know, again, like when I was listening to the meeting with the blockchain council folks, it's like, you know, Cardano's partners um, with the country of Ethiopia. Okay. So they're going to build their blockchain. And, you know, like 1% of people graduate college from Ethiopia. They spend the rest of the time proving that they have a freaking degree. So no one even believes them when they graduate from college. So, you know, one, I'm, I'm thinking everyone, make sure you have hard copies of everything that you own. Your car, your house, any deeds, anything when we're living in uncertain times. And again, like I really think Cardano is going to really help people like this is going to change so many people's lives to mm -hmm. be able to like have something stored on the blockchain that you can't change. Right. right. It's transparent. So like no government entity or no one can go on there and change it, especially with Cardano. Okay. Yeah. That's a really right? important, important yeah. point. Charles Hodgkinson, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he dropped out of the World Economic Forum because they're getting kind of crazy with the control and what they, you know, like their agenda. Yeah. So Charles dropped out like a year ago, you know, because again, it sounds really good. Like when I'm reading through the papers, really sounds great. But the actual application of it is people are going to be poor more poor than they already are like the whole idea of cryptocurrency and blockchain is to help people lift up like we're going to rise up we're going to and a lot of the problems that we live through is because of centralized governments and institutions they create the problem so you know cardano is really looking to provide a solution to a lot of these problems so we just we need some patience it's going to take you know Probably the rest of our lives, <laughs> but again, I mean, I have, for sure, <laughs> probably, yeah. but we will but, make a better place. <laughs> we're in, we're in all. We're yeah, in we're in. And again, it's, you know, truth, truth overcomes. Like it's kind of like you know, censoring the internet. You can't censor everyone. There's too many of us. So again, it's just it takes time. And like as these old systems fall, like think about you know, like when Rome fell. The Roman Empire fell. Did they just go silently into the night and they were like, oh, my time's over? No, right. they fought. You know, we're in a technology war. We're in a currency war. We're in a geopolitical war. So many different wars going on. Information war. Like all of these things are happening all at once. And then like, you know, we'll all agree to a new system. And then we'll, we'll go through like, you know, renaissance. Really, it's going to be beautiful. Yep, I agree. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it excite. I mean, I'm excited about all of it. Truly, I just know that I have options. That's what's important. I just want to have options. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, and again, it's like, you know, when I'm looking and I and I think about, you know, following, you know, Charles Hodgkinson and like all these different technologies, and I look at like all the different hacks that are going on with centralized systems just encouraging everyone like when you take your phone and you do this okay google and apple are collecting your data 
Google and Apple are getting breached. Where is your data going? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, we do things totally trusting these companies, but these systems were built to collect our data. These systems were not built to protect our data. Now, when the blockchain gets adopted and we have decentralized systems with hundreds and thousands of nodes, yeah, okay, I'll do a digital ID because we have no choice, right? That's, I wouldn't do it otherwise, but we're going to have no choice. But like when I go to a doctor's office and they want me to scan my face, not going to do it because they have one point of failure and they shouldn't be releasing these systems until everything gets moved over to the blockchain. Good points. I mean, really, I think that, you know, we just so often are in the flow and the busyness of our life that we don't really look at what are the ramifications of things that are being put in place. I mean, you could go back for years and, and see what has been taken place. But today, you know, you might have a little bit more awareness of when you are in the dentist's office or the doctor's office and they want to take a photograph. Yeah. And I just want everybody to just kind of be aware. OK, because data is worth more than oil okay so data is the most valued asset in the world and we have to start thinking like this i know it's kind of esoteric it's ethereal right but we have to think about this and remind ourselves like this is really important and until we have like the interoperability and the scalability of some of these blockchains i'm not signing up for a digital id you know like China, when they released their CBDC, they were like, hey, download this app, scan your face. We're going to do facial recognition. We're going to give you 30 bucks. Everyone did it. For 30 bucks, you sold out all your data. Like, let's hold out until we get these decentralized systems. So that way, like everybody can flourish. Yep. You know, it's just super important that we just think about these things. Yep, it is. It is out of the busyness of our days. That's all it. right. What, up? what else do we got? Ba -ba -ba. I got some good news. Let's talk good news real quick. Voyager. Want to touch base? I was doing some research this morning. Okay. Everybody should be checking their accounts or your email accounts. Voyager is keeping us posted. They sent they you an email. Okay. So double check all your assets in your wallet. Make sure it's correct. Okay. So any coin that you have. Make sure it's correct. Next week, I think there's over 20 companies that are bidding on purchasing Voyager. So Sweet. if, if Binance, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Binance because they're probably like, they're just in really good standing. So if Binance can buy out Voyager, let, let's just hope and put it out in the universe that people are going to get all their money back. Let's just right. Let's, you know, I, I think it would be really good, like even from a marketing perspective, right? Huge. Everything is marketing, right? Just yeah. eggs. It's sustainable. It's good for you. It's engineered. It's automated. Yay. Right. Same thing with our money. If Binance pays everybody back, who's going to support Binance moving forward? Oh, you bet you. You bet yeah. your sweet face. There's going to be a lot of people in line right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Voyager has been excellent in their communication. And yeah. yes, as Andrea said, do check your email because they sent two emails recently, one to let you know what was happening and another to remind you to, you know, if your balances are not in seemingly accurate, then you need to um, participate in whatever steps they're saying. But if your balances are correct, then just hang tight and wait for the rest of this storm to write itself out. Yeah. 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 I think there's like some sort of form they give you. Yeah. You know, if it's not right. And I can't imagine too many people's being wrong. Everything is right there. Yeah. The history is right there. I don't, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I was, I'm glad to see that they're um, consistent in their communication, number one, but of course, finance does seem to be the one out there that's in a really great position, but let's, let's continue with the finance conversation. If I'm not going to throw you off track because they announced something seemingly big this week, in my opinion, really, really big. This is big, yeah. big news, you know? So, you know, again, I think this is something we'll do a bigger, like deeper dive on. So did they give a date Kelly? Like, so I think it's, 
I think it's through the end of the month, right? By the end of the month, everything. Okay. So, you know, just for everybody who has coins on Binance, if you have USDC on Binance, they're moving everything to Binance USD. So it'll be BUSD. And I'm just, I, I can't really figure out like why, like Kelly and I were trying to, I mean, we could speculate, right? Sure. I mean, we could say, hey, the United States is partnering with Europe and England and the BRICS nations are partnering. There's so many things going on. Um, but for them to not support USDC, which is the second largest stable coin next to Tether, it kind of makes you wonder. Like, I'm not worried about USDC, but I'm just, I, I don't really understand. Yeah, it does make you wonder. And so basically what they did is they sent out a notification that anybody who is holding USDC in their Binance accounts, and it did say specifically specifically Binance.com. I'm sure it rolls over to Binance.us. I don't know how it would not. Um, but that those funds will be converted, as Andrea said, to BUSD by the 29th. So if you have USDC sitting in your account, it's just going to happen automatically. Um, and I would imagine this also would pertain to any wallet that would be associated. We were talking a little bit about the SafePal wallet. Um, both Andrea and I use that, and which is in many ways tied to the Binance functionalities, especially if you're in Europe. So whether or not those coins will be automatically, probably not because it's in a wallet. Anyway, it's interesting to see what they're doing and we can speculate as to why, but um, I think it makes us want to again, lean in as to what's going on behind this, this transitory piece. Yeah. And we'll, we'll include the article like in the, you know, in the podcast as well. So if everyone wants to check it out, cause it, it was, it was USDC, but it was a couple of others, right? It was like, I think it was uh, Paxos and um, true USD it was a couple, yeah. it was a couple stable coins. So again, yeah, uh, trading pairs. Yeah. Yeah. So just really interesting. So mm -hmm. you know what else was really interesting? Russia legalizing crypto for cross-border payments. Isn't that crazy in the middle of their, the war that this is what they're doing, right? Yeah. It's pretty interesting. So, you know, this is something that Kelly and I have been talking about, you know, for a while now, right? So we have the SWIFT system that, you know, really is for like over 10,000 institutions all across the world to do, um, you know, trading, okay? So with the United States dollar, the United States is the world reserve currency, almost everything that's done in trade is through the United States dollar. However, when the United States started weaponizing, right, and this has been going on, you guys, for decades. We weaponize, like, if someone doesn't do what we want them to do, or if someone's doing something really bad, we just kind of shut them off from trade for, so they'll just comply. But right. Russia, Russia is not complying, you know, and then we're seeing other nations like China, Brazil, India, South uh South Africa, Iran, possibly Saudi Arabia, if all of these nation states do cross-border payments with their own currency, okay, this is something that we've speculated about for a long time, and it just, it's mm -hmm. moving, it just keeps moving forward, but like, what's going to be that bridge currency, you know, for cross-border settlement? <laughs> And what, in your estimation, would that be? That would be XRP. That would be XRP. And on that note, this morning, what did, didn't they announce something this morning? Yep. Well, Ripple confirms that a CDBC would be coming soon. That they put that announcement out today. So. Yeah. So let's just touch base too about this, right? So, you know, we're talking cross-border payments. We're talking on-demand liquidity for like settlements, right? We've talked about these Nostros, Vostros accounts, these pre-funded accounts, right? 
which is one of the reasons why when we send money cross borders, it's really slow. The more I learn about economics and like kind of like the backing behind money, I kind of feel like money should be really slow. That's my personal opinion, but it doesn't matter what I think, right? It's going to be boom. That's it. We're going to be able to send money to India, just like sending an email, right? And that's the way it's going to be. But when we think about central bank digital currencies, right? I want us to think about wholesale and retail. Mm -hmm. Okay. So wholesale is fine, right? If Ripple wants to create a central bank digital currency or, or a platform, right? So America uh, central banks can trade or send money with all the other banking, you know, all the other central banks and participating banks all over the world. They can do that wholesale. It's faster. It's cheaper. Immediate, sure. right? Immediate settlements, on-demand liquidity, all of these things like Ripple can solve these problems. And it's not just Ripple. It's it's Algorand. It's Ethereum, it's Solana, it's it's a lot of different systems. And in my opinion, they're all going to connect and work together, right? And so this, right. Is, this is how we're going to get the scalability. It's not going to be just one system. It's going to be all these systems. But if it's wholesale, that's fine because it's programmable money. But once you do retail, that's when we get into like Klaus Schwab and Augustin and Carson's like BIS agenda. Right. It's programmable, traceable, trackable. We'll know it, you know, if, like, hey, Andrea and Kelly, no, you eat this just egg. Not <laughs> that chicken. You can't have a chicken egg in your garden. You yeah. got to eat the squeeze bottle like ketchup. And I'm just squeezing my eggs in my frying pan. That's the kind of stuff we want to stay away from. That's retail CBDC. Okay. And again, in America, we might, we might never see a retail CBDC. I believe in the human race. <laughs> I believe that there's enough people that understand China's not the best government in taking care of their people. Right. So like the facial recognition the amount of control over the CBDCs, we don't want that here. Right. But wholesale, sure, go for it, Ripple. Do 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 your cross border payments. Help these folks. You know, save money. Have instantaneous settlements, which will provide more liquidity because we hear it all the time. We're we're gonna have a liquidity crisis. Yeah. Everything's a liquidity crisis, and again. On-demand liquidity solves this, right? On-demand liquidity equals XRP. And, and I know Kelly and I have talked about this to so really, as it gets closer and I, I'm seeing more and more adoption, more corridors are opening up. Okay, with, with XRP specifically, we're gonna do another class. Like after the next couple of classes, we'll do like a breakout of XRPs and, and Ripple's ecosystem. Like I think that'll be really yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Because there's, there's so many complicated layers to the whole thing, to everything. That's why we do the deep dive in the classes in general to make it more understandable and learnable. But that'll be really helpful. Yeah. And to kind of to kind of be like, this is speculation and this is really happening. Because there is a lot that's really happening and there is a lot of speculation. Right. So I mean, Kelly and I, we were having this great talk about, you know, we got the we got the um, DTCC, right? The Depository Trust Clearing Corporation. They've adopted R3 Corda blockchain. Okay, so back in 2016, R3 Corda integrated XRP to do settlements. Now, R3 is an agnostic settlement or trading blockchain. It doesn't have to be XRP. But, you know, maybe it's going to be some of it. And again, when you think about the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, they settle $1.8 quadrillion. So what if XRP does a trillion? Right. That's huge. I mean, right. you can't even, it's really unfathomable. Right. right. Yeah. 
I mean, so it's just super, it's something that we really want to watch. And same thing, like, what if they decide to do, you know, the, the, like the clearing corporations and they do SWIFT and they do the Bank of International Settlements? What if it's all R3 Corda? Because again, you can connect all these systems yeah. and you can use Ethereum, Algorand, XDC, XLM, XRP, like all of these systems, all of these tokens are going to interoperate. So it's just something I, I'm really watching right now. Um, and I'm getting pretty excited about it because, you know, adoption is getting closer and closer. It is. And again, you know, I always I say this to you weekly, but it's super appreciative of the deep dives you do on a daily basis, you know, because there's this passion that you have for understanding it and and the relatability for you to bring it to us is huge. It's like my one stop shop. You know, our, I know we speak throughout the week, but it's like I'm really grateful for, you know, your understanding, but the deep dives that allow it to happen. Yes, Sweet. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. and that's kind of why we started doing this in the beginning was like the first yeah. conversation we had, you were like, you need to, you need a podcast, like you need to talk to people and, you know, kind of merging my technical ability, you know, like capability. I don't know, even though the word it's not ability, I really don't have any technical abilities. If you know me, you know, I can't really do too much. It's all Kelly. <laughs> But the theory, <laughs> the theory and the and the, the I could do the research, right? The functional yeah, functional analysis. Sure. I mean, I just went and became an expert in that, right? So, but yeah, ask me how to do something on the computer, and I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. It's really good stuff. But um, again, like I'm I'm really looking for, you know, we got, I think 74% of the Ethereum merge is done. We have the Vassal hard fork. These are all stepping stones to mass adoption. And it's kind of like, I always say this, change is very slow until it happens all at once. Once yeah. they flip this switch and the, the, you know, they flipped it. Like they're doing, I think, 100,000 transactions a day on our three quarters uh, platform for the DTCC. So it, it, it is happening right now. We have Russia saying they're going to use cryptocurrency for cross-border payments. So again, it's like once that goes live, there's no going back. The world is moving to the blockchain. Everything is going to be on the blockchain. It has to be for security. It's so important that when we move into this data information, all of our data is secure. It's, yeah. it's, there's no other way. Your data is not secure in this old legacy system. It's not. And it will continuously get hacked until these systems, you know, get more mature. The ecosystems build out and, and we're, we'll move forward in that way. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's a very big transitionary time. Love it. I love it. And for everybody who's following uh, Central Bank Digital Currency, we had, uh, you know, shout out to Heather. She had a great um, article. You could do Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Council. So it's a really great uh, place to do some research. And they're kind of monitoring who's doing retail, wholesale, CBDC, who rejected the CBDC. Shout out to Ecuador. Love you guys. You rejected the retail CBDC. Yeah. That's added to my list of uh, bug out places. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> right. it, is, it, it seems like, the, well, I'm not going to go there, but yes, that's a good thing. And, and to speak of that, we have this membership to Women in Crypto and Heather is one of our members and yeah. it's great because everybody's leaning in to do their own research as well. So when when others are finding things, they're putting it in in, uh, in our thread that we have in our Telegram thread. So, I agree. I mean, it's really cool what people are bringing in as far as what they're discovering out in the world because we are all in different places. So, yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's just a really sweet group of folks because I know, like, you know, I've been super busy the last couple of weeks. I've been teaching a lot, and you know, a lot of feedback that I get is like people all over the country are feeling really isolated. Their family, their friends, like when 
when we talk about cryptocurrency and the future of blockchain and the future of finance, people literally think we're conspiracy theorists. Right. And don't believe that this is happening. Yeah, I think you have to be, at least my experience is, you know, you can kind of um, stick your toe in the water a little bit to see what the understanding might be. But outside of that, you just have to kind of tread a little bit lightly there because first and foremost, um, I don't want to ever seem as a preacher on any subject, whatever that may be. Everybody has their own path and their lines to follow. And that's that's great. That's the way it should be. But I also want to encourage people to really kind of go through that pain point of leaning into what they think they don't want to know. They really do need to know. You really need to know. Right. And opinion. I mean, and we're following like the major industry players, JP right. Morgan, you know, BlackRock. Yep. You know, it's just the future of finance is on the blockchain. They're telling us they're building these systems you know, sometime in 2023, is like the regulation, you know, like the regulatory framework um, for Biden's executive order is due a couple days ago. All right, folks, you're late. You know, Kelly, if you were late on a deadline, would you get in trouble? Yeah. Okay. You think? Okay. So maybe they got an extension. I didn't hear about an extension, but I'm, I'm looking like at least three, four times a day. It's a big deal. How is the regulatory framework? Like, what are some of these ideas from the Treasury, the SEC, you know, uh, the Commodities Future Trading Commission? Like, all of these agencies are putting in their thoughts of how crypto is going to be regulated, you know, and how it's going to be managed. So again, once we get this regulation, you will be able to go to your bank and custody your cryptocurrency. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's crazy to watch the speed now within which you're seeing things coming yeah. down the pipe. So yeah, it's super exciting. It's, it's super exciting. And, um, you know, I know too, like if for folks that follow Ripple, I think Ripple does an event, it's called Ripple Swell. I think that's coming up in November. I could be wrong on the date, but you could take a look at it. And then there was, um, I forget the guys, Anthony Welfare. Okay, so he handles the C CBDC Europe and Global Partnerships. Stay tuned. Okay, because in the next like maybe two or three weeks, they're announcing more partnerships. Mm -hmm. So again, it's kind of like the future of finance is definitely on the blockchain. Like this is not a conspiracy theorist. Like this is not any, this is the truth. Like just look up these major companies. Like, you know, we have Deloitte holding Bitcoin and I believe Ethereum like on their treasury. Like this is actually happening. So we just want to be super mindful because we are going to go through one of, not one of, we are going to go through the greatest wealth transfer of our history. And I'm not saying put a mortgage on your house, but maybe right. diversify some of your U.S. dollar, you know, and, and, and pick up a small bag of a couple of coins because this is the future of finance. Again, don't listen to me. Like, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a financial advisor. But just do some research. Like Kelly and I always say, we encourage everybody to do your research. And that's what Two Women in Crypto are all about. I love it that people, when they join us, they start doing research. They're sharing with us, right? We're creating a community of like-minded people to help each other, to get educated so we can all build each other up and to succeed in the future. So that's yeah. And exactly. <laughs> and have fun. Absolutely. And the other thing I want to bring up, and we know this to be true, is that the, the percentage of women is what? Maybe 1%. I mean, it's so, I'm not even that probably. I mean, it's like, so, so we so really want to encourage everybody to lean into things, but we really have an emphasis. It's not our focus, but, um, you know, most everybody we are working with are women, but I do work specifically with some men as well. But I think it's just, you know, I think it's really powerful to educate 
ourselves as far as how the financial systems work, both sides of the fences. And it's something that I think we've, for the most part, really stayed away from, whether it be just culturally or what have you. Um, but I think it's really important in today's world during this transition to really lean in again, that very overused term that we use, um, but be ready to pivot in terms of what you're going to be doing. Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I just find, you know, again, because it's just like when I think about some of the things that are going on and we have the election, we have midterm election coming up in November. We have Cardano hard fork. We have Ethereum merge in September. We have the SWIFT system go live with their ISO 222 messaging system. November. I kind of feel like November is going to be a pretty big month. We also have John Deaton, who's the lawyer for all XRP holders. We have Jeremy Hogan, who's a lawyer who's been overseeing the entire case for Ripple XRP and the Ripple holders. So if you don't follow Jeremy Hogan, check him out. He's on YouTube under a channel called Legal Briefs. Really good guy. Very, very smart. And they're predicting like discoveries over all of these things are happening in the case. There's a really good chance we're going to get settlement any day through November. And if everything lines up and all of these things happen in November, what if we get a signed bill? You know, we just want to start. There's so many, like we've got really good momentum. And again, like my theory is, as the old legacy system falls, the new system is going to rise. So, you know, just something to kind of like dig your feet into total line, do some research, come check us out, you know, learn, learn the basics of cryptocurrency because it's going to be integrated into our daily lives, whether we want this to happen or not. Yep. It is indeed. So, well, that was great. It is a happy, happy day. All days must be. We have to weave it in. We have to weave it in. So is there anything else or shall we, are we ready to close? I think we're getting ready to close. You know, we're, we're in uh, September. Some time to like, boom, boom, plant those potatoes. Stay away from just eggs. It's all chemicals. Maybe we'll post the ingredients. In the, in the we'll do. We'll make it a point to. Until then, eat well and hodl on. Ciao. Ciao. Your hosts for Two Women in Crypto are Andrea Caldero and Kelly Lair. You'll find more information and details regarding the Two Women in Crypto membership, educational and informative class and event offerings, and more via their website, twowomenincrypto.com. Both Andrea and Kelly are available for speaking events and offer private consultations focused on helping individuals navigate the future. Until next time, cut along.